Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome to the Humble Servant Homestead. Guys, today we are here. Now we have went over all the seeds that we're going to be planting here on the homestead, guys. And so today what we are getting ready to start right now at this moment is some peppers and also some onions we will be starting today. And so we just want to go ahead and take you all step by step on the process of how we're going to go ahead and get these seeds started here on the homestead today, guys. So first up, what you're going to need is some pots, okay? You are going to need some, uh, some trays, which this right here is the cell that we have. Now, there is a couple of different uh, cells out there that you can use. We do have these ones right here as well. Uh, these are more so what we probably be starting our brassicas in, these smaller cells. But guys, for my peppers, I want to give them a quick jump start. Now, if y'all remember, these right here are the, 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 the cells or the pots that we were washing or cleaning outside. And so, yes, I am going to be using these right here today as well, guys. So um, that's it right there on the pots that we're going to be using here on the homestead. Now, another thing, uh, what we're doing here or the method that we are doing here today with starting our seeds. Now, if you remember last year, we did the method with the napkin and also the sandwich bag. Okay, um, if you want to see more about that method that we did last year, just go back and refer to our videos when we first start seeds last year, guys. But what I'm going to be doing, I have already have a tray right here already filled with dirt. Now I'm going to take you all along with me on uh, the process, or more so tell you about the process of how I go about filling my dirt inside of my pots. So this one right here that I will be starting my seeds in is pretty much a tray like this right here. Now this is the tray that these pots sits in, but guys, I use them to start my seeds as well because they also have the drainage underneath the bottom, okay? So pretty much um, what I did here, I got my dirt, okay? So that's what we're going to move on to next is dirt now of course you cannot start seeds without dirt guys and so the mixture that we are using here on the homestead is that jiffy organic seed starting mix now there is uh pretty there there are more ways that you can go about getting dirt to start your seed now say for instance if you have some mulch on your property that been sitting for about two years or so guys that actually you can yes use that to um, start your seed now there is a bit of process that you would want to go through to make sure that you're not bringing in any kind of fungus gnats or any kind of uh, bugs or anything like that from outside inside so you would want to go ahead and sterilize that that uh, that dirt okay or more so broken down wood chips. You would want to sterilize that, boil some water over the stove, pour that inside of the dirt, and that will kill uh, just about anything that is living in that dirt. And you can bring it in and use it to start your seeds, guys. It is real nice and fluffy. Would almost be like uh, peat moss. Now, another thing as well that you would want to do with that, if you was going to use it, you would also want to go ahead and sieve that out so that way you don't have any big uh, particles of wood chips in that dirt okay and so that is uh, one of the way how you can go about do that but for us here on the homestead this year again we will be using uh, this seed starting mix right here guys um, it works pretty good of course as y'all can see it do have the peed moss in here the cocoa core and also vermiculite, uh, which will help with that uh, moisture retention. 
Okay, so um, that is pretty much it. But what I usually like to do as well, whenever I am using that dirt, I would even mix it with a little bit more peat moss, okay? I would mix it just so I can stretch it on out. All right, guys. And so um, that's pretty much about it right there for the soil. Uh, you may have some bags out there at the store that you can also use that may be broken down that you can also sieve as well to use to start your seeds. All right. And so another thing that we're going to move on to whenever you're getting ready to start your seed. Yes, guys, you all will need a grow light. All right. You will need a grow light because pretty much when you're starting seeds on the inside, you are mimicking the outside atmosphere. You're pretty much bringing it in indoor. And so, yes, you do need a grow light. Now, what that light is going to do is going to help these plants to get that photosynthesis so that they can go ahead and grow. Because absolutely, you don't want your plants to grow, right? And so, um, so that's, that's, that's pretty much it right there on the grow light now another thing that you will need to help these seeds right here now if you are in your house um, it is winter time I'm pretty sure you're running some kind of heat inside uh, you know especially if you want your temperature to be right at about 70 degrees inside which is a comfortable uh, temperature and that is actually the temperature that these seeds need to go ahead and grow real well and so if you're inside and that temperature is not 70 degrees or maybe 70 to 75 to 80 degrees because um, actually you do want your soil temperature to be right at about 70 degrees guys for these seeds to go ahead and stride so what we will do here on what we do here on the homestead um, actually we do have some heat mats coming in um, but what we will do when we first start these seeds we will go ahead and put them on top of our dehydrator and pretty much check the temperature to make sure that they are comfortable and so those seeds can go ahead and burst up now if your temperature is right at about 70 sometime you will get germination within five days guys um, that's what happened here uh, with some of these pepper plants uh, when we had it on the dehydrator we had some of those seeds burst up in four days this is now the scotchy babies burst up within four days guys and so eventually I had to go ahead take them from off the dehydrator bring them in here and put them underneath the light um, and pretty much take that dome off of them all right so um we'll talk a little bit about that dome in just a moment but remember you do need a heating mat if your temperature is not about say 70 degrees inside um, and that's actually your soil temp that you need that you want to be at 70 degrees okay so um we'll talk about that dome since i just mentioned that now that dome uh let me grab one So pretty much, guys, this is the dome that I am talking about right here, which is, which is pretty much that clear plastic that you would put over your uh, seeds. And that pretty much what it does is for that humidity uh, to help those seeds to germinate a bit fast. But you don't want to leave this dome right here, guys, over your seeds once they germinate, okay? You want to go ahead and remove, once you see these seeds start to sprout you want to move this dome off of them and so that way you can get that good airflow uh, leaving this dome on top of them and that moisture sweating on the the foliage of the the plant that can also cause uh, some mildewing of the leaves or you know damaging of the leaves so you want to remove your, your dome once you seed pop up another right. thing that you're going to need you cannot start seeds without seeds guys so yes you will need to pick whatever varieties that you're going to be planting whether it may be your brassicas uh your peppers whatever varieties that you're going to be starting 
that is what you're going to need. And so right here today, that leads us into what we're going to be starting today. And also, I want to take you all along with us on that. So, of course, we have the Jamaican Scotch Bonnet Peppers, which is also known as the Scotchy Baby that we plant here on the homestead every year, guys. All right. And so, like I said, the new addition to the homestead is the chocolate scotch bonnet pepper. Um, that's some hot stuff. All right. And so we also have the Trinidadian scorpion pepper as well. This is another hot one that we will be planting. And also, once again, we're going to plant the Jimmy Nardello here on the homestead again, guys. All right. And so we also hear what we have here is bell peppers. All right. Excuse me. So we will be planting bell peppers. And so um, what we're going to go ahead and do now is get into it and kind of show you all how we go about starting our seeds and how we get to this stage right here, guys. Now, if you all can look. Uh, most of these bigger ones that you see right here is pretty much those were the ones that was uh, germinated right at about four days, guys. And now they're even putting on true leaf. Can you believe that? Yes, they have true leaves coming on, believe it or not. And so uh, once I took them off of the dehydrator, guys, what happened... Uh, because there is a quite a bit of seed inside of this cell right here, but because I took them off the dehydrator and that heat is not where it needs to be inside of this container right at about 70 degrees, what is happening, you could come on in close camera later so I can show them, you actually have peppers uh, bursting up in here uh, sparingly, okay? So you have this one coming up, you have this one and you also have that one, and they're just pretty much all throughout. You have another one here, also another one, and another one. So over the course of time, all these peppers that we have inside of here will be popping up out of this uh, tray right here. But guys, I don't wanna jump ahead of myself. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is show you all how I go about starting the seeds inside of this tray. Now remember, this is the new method that we are using here today on the homestead. And so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, also another thing that you're going to need is pretty much some markers for your seeds because absolutely not. You don't want to make the mistake thinking you have scotch, scotch bar and pepper right here but really, it's chocolate scotch bonnet you have right here. And when you get ready to go out and plant them, you have stuff where they don't really need to be. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are actually marking your seeds once you plant them so you can keep up with them. Now, uh, what we did here, uh, because right now we can't find our markers, little markers that we have, but these right here is utensils, uh, forks. Uh, we'll pretty much go ahead and utilize them for markers for our plants, guys. So if you don't have markers at home, you have some forks, you can go ahead and make you some as well. So what we're going to do right now, the chocolate scotchy, we're going to go ahead and outline these here on this tray. Now, what I'm going to do so this tray right here have right at about six, um, I'm, I'm gonna call them cells, about six cells inside of this tray right here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one right there and also the Jimmy Nardello, I think I will put um, right here. So that would be your Jimmy Nardello and we have Trinidadian Scorpion that we will put right here. And this is the Scotchy Babies. We're going to put these right here, which really and truly, um, these Scotchy Babies, guys, 
I'm not going to put inside of this cell because I am going to start another one of these with just straight scotch bonded peppers because um, we are actually looking to plant a certain number out there in the field and also be able to send some out to you guys. So we are going to go ahead and do the Jimmy Nardello right here. All right. And so this is the Jimmy Nardello. Uh, this Jimmy Nardello here, I'm, I'm going to be planting probably right at about 10 plants. Okay. Um, so we're going to start first with the chocolate scotch bonnet peppers. And if you could come on in closely, camera lady, so I can give them a close demonstration of what it is that I am doing. All right. And so pretty much here, guys, I am getting this stick. Now, once you put your soil inside of these cells and you are getting ready to put um, your seeds in, you want to make sure that this soil is compacted pretty well now when it's compacted what you are doing is putting pretty much any air pockets that is inside of this soil by you compacting it you are pushing them out and that right there helps your plants or your roots to have real good contact within the soil so that is why you want to make sure that your soil is pretty compacted once you put your dirt in all right, so come back on in camera lady. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, and I want to stay within the perimeter of this square right here. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and put those holes just like that. Now, what I'm doing, I am actually going down right at about quarter of an inch for these seeds right here. Okay, and so because I am only going to be planting maybe, I'll say, about 15 chocolate scotch bonnet peppers, I'm not going to be putting too much holes in here. All right, so right there. So that's pretty much it right there, guys. Putting in those holes right at about quarter of an inch deep all right you don't want to put those seeds in too deep and then you will have uh they'll be struggling to try and break up out of the dirt okay and so what i will do now is pretty much go ahead and grab these seeds and make sure you wash your hand when you get done it's them hot 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 all right and so i'm just going to go ahead grab a seed just like this and drop right there it's okay if that seed sits on top that is totally all right because i'm going to use my stick and push them down to the depth that i need them all right Okay, and so now what I will do, I will just simply get this stick here and push them in. And it's okay if the eye of the seed is not facing down. Eventually, once they start germinating, they will redirect themselves in the way that they need to go, guys. All right. So just push that in just like that. And that's it now what you want to do you want to come back in and push the dirt down on those seeds to make sure that you're getting good contact with the soil and the seeds so that way they can go ahead and germinate real well guys all right so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to come back 
and re and do the rest of them off camera. Okay, and so we're going to be skipping a whole bunch of days, and now we are here to this <laughs> point right here, guys. All right, and so now once those seeds that you just see me plant, once they are germinated, what you want to go ahead and do, you want to have maybe a little piece of uh, something like this right here, or even like this right here, all right? And so what you're going to do now, these are cells that's already been filled. You're pretty much going to use your finger, come right in the middle of that cell, just like that, guys. Just like that, all right? So you're just going to make you some holes with your finger, just like that. And I'm actually going down pretty deep to the bottom because... Believe it or not, believe it or not, the tap root for these right here, I'm pretty sure some of them is already all the way down to the bottom, okay? And so that is why I want to make sure that I am pretty much close down to the bottom. Um, we're going to take a quick little look and see, okay, like I said, I am pretty sure those top root is all the way to the bottom and if you can see them right here wow. with the pores on them just sucking up all that water guys all right so what we're going to do is i'm going to come on in with this right here and i am pretty much going to i don't can't you see mm -hmm. all right let me put it right here just so you can see better so what i'm going to do now is pretty much come real close and I'm going to kind of move the plant just a little bit just like that okay and I'm going down as deep as I can sometimes you can even pinch it with your finger to just make sure that those dirt is staying around the root of the plant now look at that guys so with that that is what you're pretty much um, going for whenever you get ready to extract your seedling from out of the the soil all right and just make sure you see i have quite a bit of dirt on this right here so what i'm doing right now is make sure that my hole is wide enough and is ready to receive this seedling I'm just going to sit that right there like that guys all right just like that and it's okay if you um put some of that excess um uh trunk or you know stem down into the dirt that is okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to get back some of these dirt right here and backfill it and now what you want to do as well you want to put a little bit of firmness around that plant. Now, when I say firmness, just a gentle firm. You don't want to like <laughs> squish it down and hurt those roots. All right. Now, I know some of y'all may be wondering and saying, hey, why don't you just go ahead and plant your seed in the cell and be done with it? Yes, guys, I can do that. That is totally fine. But the reason why I like to do it just like this, now I can see my plants, which plant here is healthy and growing real strong. And so I'm able to choose my pepper or choose my plant that I'm going to be putting inside of these cells. And I know that they're going to be real nice and strong and have a great strong lift off guys okay so that's a quick uh demonstration would you do another one or you think that yeah, was do pretty one clear? more do one more okay so i'm going to go for the neighboring plant that was right there next to this one hold on let me see okay okay go ahead and so i'm just going to go ahead and just like that and you can actually feel those roots pulling so these things the root is like super strong you don't want to let on go. them yeah you don't want to come but that's all right and so we're just going to go ahead and make an opening to be able to receive this sucker here and just sit it in just like that guys all right 
set it in just like that and then we're going to come back and we're going to backfill that dirt around mm -hmm. all right and so keep in mind these plants right here is um they're going on two weeks and look at that they already have the true leaf coming out on them as already okay and so that right there is that quick demonstration look at that two pepper plant ready hey yes guys and so now the next step is that you don't want to skip is watering don't want to skip that step because these plants they will simply die on you you don't want that it's just like us studies shows that we can last three days without water you don't want to starve them for three days without water so what we do when we water these seedlings here on the homestead uh, simply we will go ahead get a cup of water and we'll come on in and we will put that water on the bottom so we bottom water our seedlings and once we do that that water will last anywhere between two and a half days now what we will do to come in and check if our plants need water sometime we'll come on in we'll grab that dirt on top pinch it and like that you can see that moisture inside of that dirt with just a little bit that I've pinched or I would come in sometime guys lift that container if it's real light, what I will do, I will add some water, okay? But another thing is you don't want to overwater these plants. You don't want them to sit in a puddle of water. Uh, you will have root rot that way and you will lose your plants. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, I did say I was going to go ahead and start the onions uh, today, but I'm going to do that right there. Uh, maybe the upcoming day or so like that. I don't want this video to be too lengthy and I pray guys, I pray that this video right here was super helpful to you guys. And if it was, before you leave, just go ahead, throw that thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. And we would love to have you all over here just to, you know, to grow together, you know, to grow together. But nonetheless, um, I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you all out there for stopping by the humble servant homestead and as always peace and blessings to each and every one of you all out there and I am praying that we can all have a wonderful beautiful successful growing season guys and also remember keep a smile on your face keep a happiness on your face and just be blessed be strong and stay safe guys have a blessed one